So let me ask one last question before we move forward to, to you know, different forms of therapy, which we've touched on, but we haven't really explored, which is the differences between how you, as clinical experts, use pulmonary function tests and spirometry as opposed to ways that PCPs may or may not be using them and the complexity that they may feel about, you know, FEV1 uh, 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 and um, forced vital capacity. So uh, we can, Frank, I think, would agree with what, what I'm, much of what I'm going to say. Attempts to get spirometry widely used in primary care has generally failed in this country. Yes. It's been more successful in, uh, in Great Britain, for example. I but, failed. Yeah, but we mostly tried to do it's it. failed. Uh, the, uh, there's limited time, you know, oftentimes we'll need to have an office staff that's capable of it. And perhaps even worse, when you've looked at the data, uh, it suggests that even those, those offices that have spirometry stop doing them after a period of time. If you look at the quality of the spirometry it's done, it generally doesn't meet the ATS criteria. So it's complicated. Uh, and uh, some 12 years ago now, so it's been 12 years we've been working on this, uh, the foundation, the COPD Foundation, co-sponsored a workshop with NHLBI on case finding in COPD. And out of that, over this long period of time, came the development of a technique called capture, uh, which is the development of a very small, short questionnaire, five questions, and tying it to a mechanical peak flow device, which is very inexpensive and widely used in primary care and asthma, for example. Uh, and the publications we've been made from the several of the studies we've done, including one in the Blue Journal within the last couple of years, are really very impressive in suggesting that we might be able to use capture as a way of def better defining uh, who needs spirometry. And we're in the process now of doing another NHLBI study in primary care, 5,000 recruiting, 5,000 people in primary care to see how this works in a primary care setting. And the potential exists that it could better define for us where we go. There's even some interest from the World Health Organization, for example, in areas where there is, uh, is less medical uh, uh, technology available, where you could envision uh, uh, capture potentially using as a way of defining COPD, uh, in part because the majority of people right now are not being diagnosed with COPD, uh, with spirometry. There is both, therefore, as Maria was mentioning, the issue of both underdiagnosis and overdiagnosis, and therefore the issues of undertreatment and potentially overtreatment. So figuring out a better way to do this, which is what this 12-year process has really been involved in, uh, should be helpful for us going forward.